In 1988, Florida waitress Peggy Carr went to the hospital with chest pains, leg pain, and numbness. She told doctors that it felt like her body was on fire. When they couldn't find a source for the mysterious pain, they told Peggy that it was all in her head. The 41-year-old lived in a mixed household with her kids, her husband Pi, and his own children from a previous marriage. Shortly after Peggy went to the hospital, her son Dwayne and stepson Travis also began feeling the mysterious symptoms. At last, doctors began to take her pain seriously. After three days in the hospital, the mother was feeling a bit better, but when she went home again, the symptoms abruptly worsened, sending her back to the hospital. This time, doctors noticed something new. Peggy's hair was falling out. Luckily, one of her doctors put the pieces together and the hospital tested for thallium poisoning. Thallium is an odorless, tasteless chemical once used as rat poison, but it's so toxic that it was banned by the EPA in the 70s. By the time Peggy's test confirmed the doctor's theory, thallium had become very rare and difficult to come by in the US. Police looked to Peggy's husband as a suspect first, but Pi Carr also had the poison in his system, along with five of the kids. Although they all experienced symptoms, none of them got as sick as Peggy, who had 20,000 times the normal level of thallium in her system. Shortly after returning to the hospital, the 41-year-old lost the ability to speak and slipped into a coma. On March 3rd, 1989, four months after the poisoning, Peggy was taken off of life support. Her son Dwayne and stepson Travis were also in the hospital, Dwayne for two months and Travis for six. Investigators continued to look into how an entire six-person family was dosed with a rare and restricted poison. Police tested everything in and around the Carr household and found traces of the poison in Coca-Cola bottles inside the home. The FBI also identified tiny tool marks on the bottles, showing that they had been tampered with. When they asked the family who had purchased the Coke, nobody knew. Everyone had just assumed that someone else brought it home. Usually, the family bought Pepsi. The presence of thallium in the Coke explained why Peggy became so much sicker than the rest of her family. When her symptoms first appeared, she had tried to settle her stomach by drinking even more of the carbonated beverage. The Coca-Cola company hadn't received any other reports of their product being tampered with, so investigators knew this was a targeted attack. Police canvassed the neighbors. Of the 50 people they interviewed, nobody could think of a reason that the cars would have been poisoned except the family's next-door neighbor, a man named George Trepal. When police asked Trepal why anyone would want to poison Peggy, he promptly replied, someone must have wanted them to move out of the neighborhood. Trepal's tone struck the police as odd. When investigators asked newly widowed Pi about his neighbor, they unearthed a long history of animosity. The Cars lived in a rural neighborhood in Alturas, Florida, without many close neighbors and lots of distance between houses. However, they still had run-ins with George Trepal and his wife, Diana. Diana frequently complained about the noise from the car household. The family had barking dogs and two rambunctious teens who liked to ride their four-wheelers across neighboring properties. In March 1988, a year before Peggy died, George complained to a local zoning board that Pi was building a living space for his daughter and granddaughter in the garage without a permit. Pi was fined. In July of the same year, he got an anonymous letter in the mail. It was typewritten on a post-it and read, You and your so-called family have two weeks to move out of Florida, or else you all die. This is no joke. Pi shrugged the note off as a prank. Then, in October... Diana came over and screamed at the family about their music being too loud. When the family ignored her shouting, Diana allegedly screamed, You won't get away with this. This isn't over. Two days after that encounter, Peggy Carr was poisoned. Once they knew about the escalating run-ins with neighbors, police began digging into the Trepal's background. They learned that the couple was highly intelligent and members of Mensa, a group that requires its members' IQs to be in the top 2% of the population. 
Although Diana had a background in chemistry, police focused their investigation more on George. He fit the profile the FBI put together, an extremely intelligent white male who was outwardly passive and avoided direct confrontations. George had told the police that he wasn't home during the daytime and had no access to the car's home, but that was untrue. George also told police that he had never heard of thallium, but police found that he had been arrested in the 70s for running a meth lab. One of the ingredients he had used to cook meth? Thallium. During their spare time, George and Diana ran murder mystery weekends through Mensa. These weekends involved the two of them staging homicides and inviting their guests to try and solve the mystery. A month after Peggy died of thallium poisoning, George wrote the following in an information package given to his murder mystery guests. When a death threat appears on the doorstep, prudent people throw out all their food and watch what they eat. Hardly anyone dies from magic. Most items on the doorstep are just a neighbor's way of saying, I don't like you. Move or else. Detective Susan Gorick of the Polk County Sheriff's Department went undercover to try to get more information from George. Gorick joined the suspect's Mensa group, pretending to be in the middle of a divorce and looking for friends. She managed to befriend George. Gorick later reported that every conversation she had with the suspect affirmed her belief that he was guilty. But for months, she could only find circumstantial evidence. At one point, George told Gorick that she should poison her husband to get what she wanted in her divorce. He also said to her that he had a history of dosing friends and strangers with hallucinogens as a prank. Once, the undercover investigator saw an Agatha Christie novel titled The Pale Horse in George's Home. In that book, the murderer kills his victim using thallium. Gorick also learned that George's home wine setup included a device to recap bottles. The case finally broke when Diana got a new job in Florida. The couple decided to move, and Gorick offered to rent the Tree Paul's house when they were gone. As soon as she had the keys, police searched the house. Among other secret rooms, they found a soundproof room in the basement of the Sebring home and equipment for use in torture and bondage. The rooms were searched and tested for blood and other bodily fluids, but none were detected. However, they had seemingly just been completed. Along with a wide variety of other chemicals, they found what they were looking for. A bottle containing thallium in the garage. Oh, oh yeah, somebody got poisoned next door. That might not be a lot to you, but it's a lot to me. Oh, oh well, sorry. <laughs> They said they never caught the person that did it, and it, it really frightened me. Okay, it's going down there. It seems that they were really interested in me. I really don't know what's going on. Now, something just isn't falling in place here. I hope I'm not a prime suspect. <laughs> that could be nasty. Uh, yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> Police finally arrested George Trepal. Diana was livid and had to be restrained, but George himself was relatively calm. In their search of the couple's new house, police found a binder titled General Poison Guide. The photocopied pages inside included information on the use of thallium as a poison. They were covered in George's fingerprints. He was charged with 15 counts, including the murder of Peggy Carr, the attempted murder of her husband and children, poisoning food or water, and product tampering. The accused lawyers pointed out that the evidence in the case was purely circumstantial, they even went so far as to point out that Diana could have carried out the thallium poisoning. She also hated the neighbors and had equal access to the poison. But in the end, the evidence, though circumstantial, was overwhelming enough that the jury found George Trepal guilty on all 15 counts. He was sentenced to death in 1991. Trepal has maintained his innocence for 30 years. Defenders maintain that the evidence against him was too circumstantial to warrant an execution. They also find it suspicious that police conveniently found poison in their lead suspect's garage after pursuing him relentlessly for over a year. Others maintain that Trepal's unique knowledge and experience with thallium, which is generally rare, can't possibly be a coincidence. To them, based on this evidence, the jury's decision made sense. 
and especially when it was combined with the tree Paul's passion for poisons, his intense dislike of the neighbors, which matched the death threat he made against the cars, the uncommon bottle recapping tool, and his eerie statements to his murder mystery companions. Despite receiving the death penalty, Tripal is still in prison. Do you think the jury got George Tripal's case right? Let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to support more true crime content.